Hi, this has been Liam Wilson, and you've been listening and watching to The Escapade Show, episode number 14. We are here. We're back for another episode of The Escapade Show, and we are joined by Liam Wilson from England, who uh, is up in the studio for two days uh, to work on some music and film this podcast. Welcome, Liam. Hi guys, how are you doing? You all right? Yes, all good. Very it's a uh, well. total pleasure to have you on. Uh, it's been a long time coming, actually, mm-hmm. us two getting together in some sort of way. <laughs> not uh, that way. Uh, not in that way. <laughs> not in that way. But maybe in that way. <laughs> maybe. Who knows? Who See, knows? Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, musically, we've we've been aware of each other for, for years now, um, both involved in the, in the dance music scene in the UK and stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, and we've been working on some excellent music upstairs. So, you know, really, really excellent. It. I've had a taste of hearing what you guys have been brewing yep. up, and it is it's special. And it's the exact kind of track that we spoke about yesterday you guys yeah, wanted to start. And I think you've achieved that already in a small sp- amount of time. Now, the first way we've managed to collaborate with you is we had you on the live stream. That's correct. Not too long ago. Yeah. Not too long ago. That was a month ago, I think. Yeah, yes. Yeah. How did you find that went? Did you enjoy oh, it? Was it was great, yeah, it was a good laugh. Uh, obviously, I come up with Louise and uh, we had a good uh, good few drinks and stuff, good mixes. Uh, it, was yes. a good, it was a good laugh, good to get to know you guys as well. That's when me and Stephen first discussed like the, uh, the idea of coming up mm-hmm. and working on some music together. So uh, it, was, it was good to <clears> get to know everybody and the team here that uh, escapade and mm-hmm. uh, then obviously put the br- groundwork in so to come up with the ideas when before we came up and uh, did the collaboration yeah that's mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. Uh, the ideas were, were certainly laid uh, on the live stream the, th- the good thing about the live streams is like <clears throat> there's such a combination of musical people yes there and we just knew straight away i've always kind of known though when we got together and started working that it would kind of flow i said that yesterday mm-hmm. um and you know the best studio sessions are the ones that really didn't try it just yeah, all it just, just flows together just you know and every 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 sort of element just came mm-hmm. you know and there yeah, wasn't was really forcing anything a lot of the stuff know? as well like it like you said before when we when we knew we was going to work in the studio together because obviously like I, i've been aware of your style and stuff that you've done in the past so i knew like we would come up with something uh, pretty unique and i think yesterday <coughs> and today has proved that anyway because we a lot of the stuff was act, uh, uh, like coming out by accident and yeah. stuff like that and it worked and uh the, the tracks just flowed together which is great really no, it's, no, like, it's, it's a lot good. better when you don't have to force it no I know and we actually towards the end of the session they were like should we try a melody in there and we tried it in and it wasn't really working but you could have went down the rabbit hole with that and ended up pissed yeah. off mm-hmm. just keep go- going with that that's what I say sometimes to producers like when they ask me advice and stuff and they'll say like oh when I'll get writer's block and stuff and the, the ideas aren't working out yep. and I say to them sometimes you can, you can be over trying to overproduce something, you know, trying to fit something into a track that's just never going to work. Mm-hmm. So if you're working with an idea and it's just not fit, if the rest of the production's been flowing yeah. and you try something and it's not, nine times out of ten, you just need to no, of course. bin that, it off. That's huge advice. It's like you only really get to that level, though, after you've worked like, ten years in the yeah. studio because, I, you know, there's been so many times where I wouldn't not have that awareness mm-hmm. and I would just keep trying and then before you know it, you fall out of love with the track and... You know, yeah. have known when to cut things and go. No, not it's not working. Let's move on. I think that's a that's a real skill. It's part of like mastery of the, the craft. Do you know, it's what I mean? funny that you're saying that because I was I was going to launch in with that because it is. I think it, it it takes so much refinement over the years to really realise that less is more. Yeah, uh, and I think most people don't think that. They think, well, I need to process that. I need to fling an effect on here. I need to add in about ten layers. When some of the times, you know, the reason why it's probably sounding so muddy is because you're doing that. You're just flinging yeah. too much in. There's so many over, like a lot of the productions as well, I find these days, there's so many overproduced tracks. Mm-hmm. Like, do you, do you find that there's adding layer after layer and it just sounds like a brick wall of sound? And it's like there's no, there's no actual elements of the tracks working and breathing together. Do you know what I mean? Like, when I'm producing music, I, I want stuff, little different elements to breathe together mm-hmm. and like, where they feel like it's they're all working together in the track, like as a harmony, not mm-hmm. not just like you're throwing one sound in to fill that space, because it, it's off, like there's sometimes the, the sound doesn't even need to be there. That's that. Just gotta work with what you've got. If you've got a good idea mm-hmm. and a good concept, work with them ideas. Like just EQ, add bits of saturation and like bits of processing to them sounds to get the best out of them, yeah. not just fill the track with loads of unnecessary sounds. Yeah, that's that because the minute you bring in another sound from another synth, it's immediately alien yeah. to the musical concepts you've got there already. So look, for us there, we were trying to add in a melody and the initial idea was great. And we could have went, no, no, it's just the wrong sound. Yeah. And tried to 
continually add. Whereas what we've done is we just stripped it away, and actually we had everything we needed there anyway. Well, you deleted the full thing. I see. I just you do it. Uh, highlight yeah. gone. <laughs> And then all of a sudden, you're like, no, actually, the yeah, space there. Yeah, just let it there, breathe it, again. And it, and it was like the, the, the energy all come back into the track because just letting the track breathe rather than trying to force that melody over the mm-hmm. top when it doesn't really need it. We had a nice vocal going in there, a little yeah. hook. Yeah. And, that, and once you let the breakdown drop, that's where everyone in the club, on is the, the dance floor is going to just be like, like waiting for that Absolutely. big suspense anyway. You know, totally. And the thing, um, you know, we've been buzzing off the track. It's not something typically that you would hear from no, us. Definitely but not. But still ticks the box. It's melodic. <laughs> It's driving. It's techy. Yeah, it's got a nice groove. It's nice, man. And, and that's it. And I'm just, I'm thriving off of this sound at the moment, you mm-hmm. know. Um, we're listening to a track that's in the charts just now. Um, and it's just got a real, yeah, real it's like maybe one to two, six BPM, but yeah. it drops it's got into a real trancey sort of drops vibe. Drops a proper yeah. trance vibe. But it's modernised. It's got a big garage, kind of suction hoover yeah. bass. And it's got a cracking vocal on it. And I, I'm really enjoying where music's going there. Yeah, well, I, I, I'm all for that vibe as well. I feel like... Uh, a lot of different genres of music are crossing boundaries right now like a lot of the techno is like mm-hmm. melodic it's getting that melodic elements back to it so sounding more like what trance used to sound like when when it first come out do you know mm-hmm. what i mean it's like it's got that sort of melodic stuff but it's just still built on the percussion and mm-hmm. the groove rather Absolutely. than sticking five million bass lines in <laughs> just <laughs> triple midi files after the kick do you know what i mean it's I just know. it's going back to that finding the solid foundations I'm mm-hmm. building before you start building a track and then just get a nice little melody over the top. And it's it's, take, it's putting the fun back in. I, I was quite disillusioned there for a while like because you feel like you're put into a certain way you have to do things, you know, a certain sample pack or a certain this or a certain that or if you want to produce a certain style, you've got to do this a certain way. But, you know, as you say, having just one layer of something like a bass line moving and then getting a nice patch of a sound you like. There's literally two channels there. Yeah. And your whole vibe for the whole track can be done in two channels with, t- with two rich sounds, as exactly. opposed to thinking five million bass lines yeah. or you know, whatever it is, you know mm-hmm. what I mean? It's the like, right processing as well. You can make, you can make one bass line, like most Psytrance is pretty much one bass line and it's just processed the right way, mm-hmm. find the right balance with a kick and it'll sound beefier than any 10, like 10 mid bass lines you try and add mm-hmm. over the top because you're giving that space for it to breathe mm-hmm. and it's as long as you're filling all the, the frequency ranges you need to fi- the, the need to fill you're going to get that punch through anyway with the right processing yeah. you don't need to keep adding loads and loads of bass lines yeah for sure you the, 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 this is the, the, the perfect podcast for producers out there man <laughs> like, well, hey, that, that's what the this is what it's all that, about that is what the, the escapade show is all about it's about bringing people in with their um, own skill set with their own artistic skill set yes. it doesn't need to be music producers it's like you know authors we've had comedians on Absolutely. But they're bringing what I mean what they're they get, good they, at. we're lucky enough to interview guys that have sat on their own yeah, push through all of these barriers that everyone is currently yeah. going through, and we've got them sitting there telling us how they've got through it's it. Great, Do you know what I mean? It's great. I mean, one of the things I know certainly. Um, so Liam, he actually you you run your own studio uh, down south. Yeah, yeah. Um, and that's that's how I knew, found out about you. Yeah. Um, you know, through the stuff that you were doing there, and we've obviously connected sort of a few yeah. years ago through social media, always kind of liking and you know sort yeah, of trying to stuff, yeah trying yeah. to kind of push each other. Um, so it was it was an absolute pleasure to obviously meet you for the the, the live stream. We all had a cracking night. Yeah, I mean, the definitely. positive vibes were were flowing. <laughs> um, and obviously having you back now for round two to get a bit of work done is uh, is certainly cool. So how have things been called the studio? And that's a perfect wee time to plug your studio as well because we're all about collaborating. Yeah, yeah, so. definitely. Well, the f- the thing is with me now, I've, I, I, when I first uh, got my studio, like because I I've been trying to do this like go full-time music for since I was like 15 years old you know what I mean I never I've always done DJing I've never really done anything else with as much passion behind it so mm-hmm. it's like it, although I've had different jobs and stuff I always pushed to do that and then when I got with uh, my girlfriend Louise uh, she was the one who like pushed me and said like you could make a full-time job out of this but obviously you know it's not as easy as just right I want to make a full-time job out of it so there you go go and do it it takes yeah. a lot of uh, mm-hmm. a lot so of time and effort that's a similar story to me it's trying to make music because you know uh, gigs only come because the amount of DJs that are out there don't they it's mm-hmm. like DJing just became so accessible so you had to mm-hmm. you had like, to be able to make produce. music do you know what I mean and that's obviously a very similar story to, to myself yeah. actually like making music gave you that skill set yeah, and then it allowed you to expand well, on that, the show stand out that, that's what I was trying to say yeah, so yeah. then once I'd learned how to make music then I start. It was like when I was looking into getting a studio. So I worked from home for like 
it was like two, two, three years when I left work and then I thought I was get you know, when you're at home you have distractions yeah. and like you, yeah, you yeah. sometimes you'll end up you having to do you'll start cleaning the kitchen or you start doing other you'll jobs. You'll procrastinate. Yeah, so then I uh, I thought I need to get another studio and then I was engineering for people but like now I've cut back on engineering, you know, I'm not uh I'm not like engineering for people as much. I was concentrating on my own stuff mm-hmm. and uh, I just got my regulars and things now and I've been mainly concentrating on the label. So concentrating on getting my own stuff done and, and uh, trying to really, because this year I spent so much time uh, producing for the people, like now I wanted to start pushing for myself and doing my own stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think I've just cut back down really on engineering and just focusing now. I spent like coming up and doing collaborations yeah, yeah. with people like yourself and yeah. spending time on doing things that are going to, progress more for the the my label and for yeah. you yeah, personally as an artist yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah because you could spend a lot of time doing uh, engineering stuff but you find yourself you like start plateauing it's a key point but it's like um you know a lot of people will be watching this and they'll be like you know i've got a creative skill and i'd love to work full time but you hit the nail on the head there you're like you can't just go full time no uh you've got to have various safety nets yeah you know, so one of them is an engineering thing, another is like a part-time job running alongside your thing, uh, gigs as well. But you've got to be super creative and conscious if you want to move into doing this full time. And you you were talking about that earlier. You know, you've, where you've had clients in the past that they come in, they learn how to make like one three eight trance, and they go, "Oh, I've made it. I'm going to go full time." But they've not really tried any other genre. Or what if they get a client that says, "I want, I want to make house music," and you're like, "Well." Yeah, you can't really learn. do that. You need mm-hmm. to be constantly learning yeah. each genre. Always upgrading. Always upgrading your equipment. Always upgrading your mind up there. Yeah, constantly. Yeah. You know, constantly, yeah, constantly pushing it. You know, if you're an artist and you want to work in the music industry, you probably find that, you know, we had Miller on there mm-hmm. uh, last podcast and he's uh, one of the most successful Scottish rappers, but he's still working full time. working two yeah. jobs and all that. So he's working two, three jobs. Yeah. You know, so it shows you, like, you know, you do the music for the fun of it. And, and and you do, uh, you know, the side thing to fund it. Yes. Do you know what I mean? Well, this is the thing, though. It is about innovating, because that's what we've had to do. Like, uh, we, we, you keep, keep you them know, off if you want, doesn't matter. You know, it yeah. certainly couldn't be um, full-time, especially me, because I don't actually make music. So I've really had to define my own role within Escapade in terms of what we're yeah. doing. Um, and that's why we've had to diversify what we do, because if it was full-time music, it's a, such a difficult thing. And I think people just think that your full-time music... You, 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 you know, you must be Calvin my Harris. Will, my level. tracks will make the, make the money. Yeah. Uh-huh. Well, I mean, somebody said that to me the other day there. Um, they were kind of like, oh, I'm hoping to learn music production over the next year and then, you know, hopefully start getting some stuff out there, start making some money from it. And I was like, well, good luck <laughs> yeah. to your brother. Uh, if, it's, um, if it's only that easy, that's, that'd, be, that'd yeah. be a dream world. But the thing is, you've got to, find, you've got to adapt yourself to as many different things as you can like like totally. people think that you're just if you're especially in the industry if you're in the trance industry as well people think you could just leave work start, carry on DJing at a few clubs and release one track a month is going to you're going to be it's going to be substantial enough to, yeah. for a living but that it doesn't work like that because and let, that's why you need to engineer for people sometimes as well because yeah. mm-hmm. that's uh, it's a it's a fast way of income and it and it keeps you ticking through the week to be, allow you the time to make your own music yeah unless there's just a humongous gap between the top DJs yeah. and everyone else. So, There's you know, you've got 25 grand a show, guys, and up. Mm-hmm. You know, that's them. Mm-hmm. And then you've got kind of, I suppose you've got the 10 grand people, yeah, the fives, the tech guys. Then the 300 gangs, quid. Yeah. And then the 300 quid, yeah. quid a gift, a gig, gift, <laughs> uh, a gig uh, if you get it. Yeah. So maybe 300 quid a gig for the smaller guys every two months. Yeah. That's not enough. That's it's not, not enough. Pay. The thing is as well, when you're actually talking about engineering, you're not actually just doing like engineering for, for, for fun. You are really <coughs> engineering for people at a high level yeah. who are uh, being uh, really successful in we, terms of the back of the work you're putting in, which is what the service is all about. Uh, well, th- well, that's the case as well. Sometimes you're engineering for people who are just trying to get on the circuit and they and they don't have the knowledge to to uh, mm-hmm. to make music, so you're engineering for them so that they can get on the circuit. And then on the other hand, you, uh, you, could, you I engineer for like people who are already on the circuit and they just don't have the time to do any studio work because they're DJing all the time. They have no interest in mm-hmm. doing music. any studio. They don't, they don't need to because 
the, and people see it as like, oh, well, that's a bad thing. That's bad thing. but that's their prerogative. They don't want to make tunes. They want a DJ. So it, who are we to judge to say you have to go and learn how to produce? Because just if they don't want to learn how to produce, they don't have to. And they may be a great DJ. And, that's and, what I mean. There's that's... loads of people who can produce, but they can't DJ for Toffee. Yeah, yeah, I mean? yeah, yeah. That's it. And the thing is, at the start of the, all of this, they were two separate, completely entirely yeah, separate, separate crafts. Separate because see, you make music in the nineties, like you know, I speak to Lange and Malorca Lee, Paul Keenan and Malorca Lee and. Um, you know the guys at the start you needed 10 plus grand to yeah, get to get a studio to get like a sampler or mm-hmm. um, I know a, a drum machine carrying or, hardware you with know, you it was, it was a serious right. business so you weren't like into DJing as well you were a geek and you were yeah. into music and you spent 90% of your time in a, in a, a studio a dark room but like <laughs> the, trying to get the timings right while it was running mean, away from you know? yeah that's what I mean you, you couldn't just did it, there was no just open up a, a, a MacBook and then you'd bang on you go with Ableton or Cubase and just you can make a track you had to have Drum machines, samplers, like computers, mixing mm-hmm. desks, and then uh, and there was always stuff going wrong with these things. So you're having yeah, to yeah. get fixed. You, you and then, uh, most of the DJs that were out at that time, they were out every weekend off the chops. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like they, they they weren't in the studio working seven days a week figuring no, all this stuff out. They, they weren't at all, and it, it's, it almost requires two different lifetimes to master two different crafts. Mm-hmm. But nowadays you're expected to do both, and yeah. if you can't do both, you're a sellout or a failure. You know what I mean? Yeah, you know, so, it, also it, promoting yourself yeah, as well. You're gonna be a, so you're adding a third wheel. Into yeah. that, you're gonna equation. be a photographer, videographer, video editor, producer, mm-hmm. blogger, graphic designer, a graphic designer, and, yeah, a, and, a, and a DJ as well. If and if you're DJing shit, that's it. You should them all. <laughs> <laughs> that's true, but you know, with technology, this is why technology has allowed you to be all of those those things in your MacBook. Well, this is yeah. like Photoshop, eight pound a month. Uh, Adobe Suite, yeah. Um, Premiere Pro, so that's in there as well for yeah, your you've video got editing. Everything, Lightroom, you've got everything's in there. And you're like, the amount of software that's that probably cost hundreds of thousands of pounds back then, full studios, all just in, in this. Monthly yeah. manageable that's fees now. That's how they hook you as well. Yeah, well, yeah. everything you can that's even get Pro Tools and stuff a month. In fact, next thing you're paying 250 quid a month just on all your stuff that you need to keep doing your career. I know. I but know. the thing is, if, if you do it properly, like if, if you do if you do all these things properly and you can, and if you really want to be a DJ or an artist or a producer and you want to be recognised, you, you find the time to do it and you mm-hmm. do it and you and you work till three four o'clock in the morning until mm-hmm. you can get to a certain level. Yeah. And then eventually all these tools that you've got to your hand, they're 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 in your arsenal. They're in your hand. Yeah, you've got them there to do all the job that you need to do. See, essentially what what it is is the people at the top of the game they've worked it out somehow. So it's like there's no point in complaining about it. It's like that's what I mean. no, it's they, manageable. They, you can they do have work so, to three in the morning to do it, you know every I mean? single day. Mm-hmm. And like, we done that. We were setting this up. We were in here 100%. constantly because you had no money and you had no choice. That's All we had was drive and a and a dream and a vision well, to do stuff. Mean. I mean, we were in here. What I mean, pretty much nine to one every day, weren't yeah. we? Every like, day we were wrapping up one two in the morning every night. So and what's then, that? That's like. 16 hours something like that but that's what you've got to do You've it's got like, to. It's like I, I worked I worked two jobs uh, for like f- seven years or something what were the row. jobs what were you doing I, I work, I've done everything from working on the drives like doing patterning printed concrete work, packing up boxes like car phone warehouse uh, flyers um, I've worked in a desk factory uh, I've worked as a bricklayer plaster border I've worked in a, a PVC uh, mm-hmm. what they call conservatory place where they mm-hmm. built them all and I did all these jobs I got sacked from most of them because I just wasn't interested <laughs> you know what I mean yeah. I, wasn't, I wasn't turning in on Mondays because I was at DJing on weekends so yeah. I weren't going in Mondays yeah. but the thing is then I always worked and did jobs I didn't want to do because I knew when I finished work at five I'd go home and I'd work till I work till three, four o'clock in the morning, mm-hmm. learning how to produce mm-hmm. and just practicing mixes because that's what I wanted to do it's a very intimidating it's time back then see when the progress <laughs> is slow and yeah. it's like, it's so easy to go the other way than stay at it. To leave like, it. Yeah. so easy at it. I just remember that time where, you know, the progress is just like millimetres at a time, you know, and you're beating yourself up and well, stuff like that. You, you never know, think you're going to make it at some points, but the thing is, then you'll have, you, when it, you could go weeks where you feel like this is not going to happen. Mm-hmm. Like trying to learn how to produce is the hardest thing that I've ever had to do because mm-hmm. I had no interest in it when I mm-hmm. first started. I just wanted to DJ. I, that's all I'd ever done. Mm-hmm. And I, I had no interest in learning how to produce, but I knew I had to do it. Right, okay. And That's then, an interesting way of looking at it. And, and, and I, I did it, and I forced my way to do it, and then now I have a love for producing. But mm. I only do it because I want to DJ at places, yeah. but it's like, it was the hardest thing to do ever, but when you have to do it... Yeah, totally. You just, if, if, when you have your down days and you feel like you're not getting anywhere, and you get negative feedback from, like, you'll send a tune somewhere, and they'll just say, this is crap. 
yeah. and you'd be like thinking, oh my god, it's never gonna happen. But then that little bit, them little bits of drive that you keep getting back of it, you, you just keep yeah. doing it. You do, you do, you get glimmers, you do. Like, I mean, it happens all the time in this game, you know, where it is. It's like yeah. you, you could easily be... It's like a roller coaster. Yes, mm -hmm. on the road to Constantly giving up. Constantly down. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. And then you get that massive get high. Massive high. Massive high. You get a big gig and you're like, both peaking. And yeah. then bang. The yeah, yeah. Bang, slap, it's like Monday morning, 9am. <laughs> yeah. yeah. uh, when you're still up. <laughs> yeah. I know. So see, one thing that's uh, really obvious interesting about you in terms of, like, so there we go, you've worked loads of jobs, you've had to diversify and you've forced yourself into learning, which has now made you be sustainably an yeah, artist. No, no, that's my full-time you, job. You, you've also, uh, I've seen you've done some stuff for like outside of the music industry, you've done stuff for like film and TV yeah, and stuff yeah, like that. I, Can you tell us a wee bit about that? Yeah, well, I've done, I've done this, this a quite, when I went to university, when I did sound engineering, like I did that whilst I was working as well, like, uh, part time and, and, and that was just to learn more about the engineering side mm -hmm. of stuff and the sound design but uh, that opened doors for like uh, to a lot of different types of the industry I never thought was there like mm -hmm. the, the, a lot of sync work and there's loads of places out there that like you think little um, adverts on the internet for like uh, cookery things or anything the only little clips of mm -hmm. music royalty so, free yeah well so like, I entered a few things like that and you can you could just I, I did one thing for a film and it, got, it was on for like 15 seconds and I think you got paid like £500 for that. Just just 15 seconds of a music clip. Mm -hmm. And that was like with Warner Brothers. But yeah, I've seen that. There's loads of stuff like that. Mm. It's good. Again, it's uh, it's that other uh, financial it's sort of income stream in order to support an, an artist's career, isn't it? It's, it's using the skill set. It's, it's good work. Yeah, it is. It's, it's good. Quite it's good. Fun it, makes and you, it makes you like versatile to different types of things. Like. Totally. And you might be working on like, some sort of soundscape for an advert, advertising luxury boats, but like, uh, you know, you put in some sort of string thing. Well, that's all they want. Th they want th some. It, they'll, they'll give you like a description of like, yeah. uh, like the sync place will say like they're looking for a piece of music that's quite suspenseful, and then they'll put like an example of a track that they like, and then you just what a I reference do, track. I just like reverse engineer that track and mm. then send it in. And look, you don't get every job, obviously, but you know, like you, I've, I've got quite a few jobs off it, and it, it's just if it, the things if you if you've had days whilst you're working full time music, if you have days where you're not got people in the studio, mm -hmm. spend a day doing something else. Don't just sit around playing Xbox or anything. Yeah. You know what I mean? Do 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 some other music, and uh, like I'm doing a big thing for uh, a well-known brand at the minute and doing all the concept for them and that's like it's completely different it's not like dance it's not like uh, doing writing a trance track or anything but coming up with a concept for their mm -hmm. brand and mm -hmm. i've done i've done that that's uh, going ahead this year and that that just that, that things like that keep you ticking over whilst you're working on your own music mm. no definitely Very cool. that's a uh, great point for anyone watching you know if you want a certain thing you've got to definitely diversify and, and be creative with it uh, certainly reading a lot as well helps you as well you know reading, reading about diff different things as well you know listening to audio books there's, have you ever there's a website I, I actually spoke about this on my Instagram before there's a, a site called Audible mm -hmm. I think it's through Amazon mm -hmm. and they're like audio books but if you're not really into reading books they just like read them out to you but you can buy a book a month and like while you're in your car just put mm -hmm. your headphones in mm -hmm. and like read on stuff like marketing you know uh -huh. marketing yourself online and yeah like business stuff and things like that, that music stuff, anything. There's, that, like reading stuff, finding information out, opens up loads of uh, like opportunities as well. No, definitely. Audible's, Audible's one. I had one as well. What was it again? Um, <coughs> what was the name of that? You you were using that Blink? Blink Blinkist. Blinkist. Uh, and it's like Audible but, but Audible, but it doesn't take the full book. Yeah. So it's like you're kind of... The best part. Cutting the corners. Yeah. So you're getting the book, but maybe the 12 main points read to you yeah. as opposed to the That's whole cool. thing. So it's quite cool. I was using that. Learned so much from it. You learn differently from reading as well as listening, though. You're almost in a different kind of... Yeah, sensory sort of perception of it, it because you're listening as opposed to reading well, it off that, a page. Well, that's what I like about listening to the audio books because when you're in your car, it feels like someone's just with you driving. I'm like, ah, yeah, 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 it's totally. totally. Yeah. <laughs> there's, no, there's no one there. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> no, it's but good. They do, they do though. That's one thing that I mean, if you watch any of these big interviews with like uh, big entrepreneurs or or people are doing it, you know, like the, it is always comes down to read more. Yeah, you know, because your average person reads a book in a year. 
Uh, and then your top CEO reads over 50 books a year. Yeah. So that's like a book a week. Now, it doesn't mean you have to read a book a week. No, but it shows. But shows, it shows. You, shows you the level of output that you nearly need well, to be putting into reading. Anything. I think even watching documentaries, anything, reading, what, 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 learning, learning is just constantly... I, f- I find that if you're looking into the industry you want to be part of or anything that can help uh, help you in the industry that you're doing, Learn you constantly it. be learning. If you just, once you stop doing uh, what you're doing, like if you, if you want to be a music producer or an artist, when you stop doing it, say you have a bra- break off music, if you just spend most of your time just sat playing Xbox or yeah. go and play FIFA, you, I, I find that you're not really going to be pushing yourself if you really want to get there anyway. If you've already got there mm-hmm. and then you want to have a bit of free time. But I feel like whilst you're still getting there, to me, what I've always done is I've just, when I've not been making music, I've been learning about it, reading about it, mm-hmm. wanting to find out everything about it because I'm obsessed with it. That, you know what no, I mean? that's, that's a key point, you know, because there's someone else out there doing it when you're not. Yeah. That's the way I look at that as well, you know. So. Just learning in general about the the industry you want to be a part of, like basically like knowing about, I think it's massively important to know about the history uh, anything that's going on around you in the in the industry mm. at that time, future stuff that might be happening, mm-hmm. uh, future technologies, anything, just constantly keeping yourself fresh and, and what is going on in the scene. It's like I think if you if you know what's going on around you and what's happened before, yeah, you you, you re- you've got a massive advantage over. Massive. Um, you were saying something again. It just triggered there. Um, that was so interesting, and it was regarding like um, you know, not copying people. Mm-hmm. Now, there's one thing using a track as a reference when you're learning. Massively important, right? But what you were saying there, if you're looking at a track that says it's in the charts and you're like, I want to make a track like that, or they go to somebody like you and they yeah. say, make me a track like that, and your rebuttal was, well, you're already six months behind yeah, what's that, current. Well, that's the thing. A lot of, a lot of times, like, uh, you'll find when you're engineering as well, some people, they want... They'll come and they'll say like, I want, I want to make something like, or if they want to learn, I want to learn how to make something that sounds exactly like this, or mm-hmm. I want to make that style. But the thing is, record labels and stuff, they've already signed that track. The, the, the six months ago, maybe even twelve months ago, they're not looking for that anymore. They're looking for new, fresh stuff. That's what having record labels about. Like they want mm-hmm. fresh stuff that yeah. sounds unique. So I, I, what my advice is always to. Well, you like that, but how do you think you can better that? Do you know what I mean? What could you add to that track yeah. to make your own? Yep, absolutely. Make it make it slightly different. Te- no, so it's good to take uh, inspiration and stuff from tracks, but try and try and just give it your own little twist. Of course, and not out and out copy it. Yeah, um, you know when you're A and B in things like you know solo, non-solo, solo, non-solo, <coughs> and you're just listening back and forward trying to emulate something else. You're you're in the past. Yeah, you're you're, you're already six months behind anybody. Of course, and. Uh, you said as well, you know, the label isn't going to sign a track they've already signed. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. So, you know, and that's it. So it's about... It's interesting that. Taking a, take an influence from the past, say the 90s, yeah. 2000s, Find whatever. something that's, re- that's really old, not that's just six months old, and then br- and feel how you can bring that back. Like like we were yeah. saying earlier about the, the stuff that's happening with techno and stuff now, it's sounding so like... Uh, fresh. Fresh, and it's yeah. got like melodic elements to it, which was like what trance was like years ago. It's like... Try and bring something like that back. Like if you like, if you like an art that's in a certain mm-hmm. track, yeah. then find out what synth that art was made on, yeah. and then try and recreate that yourself. Re- redo something, you know. And um, the thing is, with music, is most of it's been done. Yeah, but music's done, completed. But, it's game over but, now. But, <laughs> but but that's that. But nobody remembers. Yeah, like yep. older yep. tracks. Mm-hmm. So it's like you know, although they say that those chords have been done, right? Yes, but you can redo it in a way that's still so, so fresh nobody's yeah, going to remember your own. where you plucked it from what dance anthem cd 2002 yeah you've taken a chord structure from mm-hmm. i think I mean? a good example of a one that they've actually like beyond sampled was the one dance that drake done and yeah. that's actually that whole track the bass line everything in it is from like a garage tune for yeah. like 2008 and it's basically mm. the exact same tune and he's just rapped over it yeah they've done it with that dj khaled tune with the new rihanna one aren't they that's an old is it santino tune or something oh, i can't remember the name but it's yeah yeah the, it's, the it's, it's, um it's the exact it's the same tune do, do, yeah and it's got the, it's all the all the uh, all the guitar riffs and everything is exactly the same santana santana down now yeah and it's, that, it's all the it. same look at dance music in general look at daft punk you know yep. look at i mean rap look at dr dre you know, he was rigging old uh, 70s stuff, 70s disco, soul, yeah, into a sampler stuff. and splitting it into four or eight bars. 
speeding it up the tempo, adding some processing, yeah. adding an 808 in, and there's your there's your beat there's to your rap on There's top your of. brand new brand new stuff as well. All the all the biggest producers and stuff with the prodigy, everything like all them big dance hits, they were all like sampled to death. But yeah. that's what that's what was good about dance music, man. It's used sample stuff, but then just recreate it into your own stuff, not just make it exactly the same. No, of course, and it's it's actually a, an it's art more exciting as well. Uh, if you want to be an artist, is. you'll find that. If you, especially to people who are learning how to produce, if you feel like you you're not enjoying it as much because you feel like it's becoming a chore, it's because you're not making music anymore. Mm-hmm. It's because you're trying to compute a process, program something to sound mm-hmm. exactly like something else. If you try and make something that's feel like you you cr- p- plucking ideas out your brain, yeah, and then feel like oh, I'm, you start f- hearing it come to life uh, on your computer and you're working on it, that's when you really start to enjoy it. Do you know what I mean? And you'll find that you'll make the best music you've ever made when you when you make your stuff that's coming fresh out your brain. Yes. Mm-hmm. No, that's it. And it's like, us as artists or anyone who's who's watching, it's a totally different feeling in your in your stomach when you pluck it from like yeah. the idea centre yes. as opposed to, what does that sound like? Does that sound, does that exactly sound like that? Same. Does that sound like that? Does that sound like that? It's like, it's almost like it's being cocked from a number of different variables, from a number of different things you're feeding into your brain and something fresh is being yeah. born. And the feeling of then getting that fresh idea over Oh, is what a, being a producer is all about. It's but like, you'll be proud of that piece of music then exactly. as well. You want to show people that piece of music and, and it's not something that's going to be forgotten about after a month. No you way. know what I mean? It's like, and a lot of times when you're trying to, if you're just trying to recreate something that sounds like something that's already out, mm-hmm. like you'll find it's never going to do as well as that track. It's never going to be as big as the track you've copied off and it's and it's not going to last as long. The lifespan of it, and you're not going to enjoy it. You're not going to enjoy listening to it in, in six months. Because you just think, oh, that's that kind of track that's I ripped that. off there. Or someone will say to you, that sounds exactly like this. And I was, imagine spending so much. Could you spend the same amount of time doing it? Yeah, you do. So you spend, spend a lot of more time because you're trying to recreate something that's already been done. Yeah. Just try to create something that's fresh. Of course. I, 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 I find I'm, making the, I'm having the most fun right now mm-hmm. making the music over the past couple of years anyway since i've just stopped to stop like trying to do anything that anyone else is doing just started doing what i want to do and, yeah. and make music how i want it to sound and i'm i'm, I'm excited about the mu- music that i'm making I, I like i can't wait to when i'm going to a gig and i think the, the crowd's all buzzing and they're mm-hmm. all dancing and then I'm, i know that the next tune i'm going to play is going to be something that they've never heard yeah and it's going to sound fresh and then when you see the, the reaction you get it's, it's priceless man that's, class, that's the know. best reaction you're going to get it is a feeling you know that you should strive to have that that feeling for sure I guess it's just a lack of knowledge as well though of people who are trying to break into the industry because yeah. they're looking at their peers or they're looking at their heroes musically and saying well that, that track that, changed my life I want to make something like yeah. that and you know which is cool as well you know in a sense of a, of a respectful manner if you like it's like oh I'd love to make a sound like Liam Wilson because his track you know really changed me or whatever but You've tried I've, to make remember me a few times. Yeah, I, 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 well, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know, I, I heard that first time on uh, Will Atkinson show on Radio yeah. One, and I do. I remember messaging you as well, just yeah. saying what a track, mate. Oh, thank you. Um, man. You know, it's it's hard nowadays to get trance that's really that you know that resonates. It's such really nice, <laughs> and and it's a modern blend. You know, you, both you guys, second phase. There's guys out there doing stuff that is that little bit different. That's not just the, oh, the generic hands like in the air with your eyes closed. And Will Rees. Like, uh, yeah, like Paul Denton, Woolery, Sam Jones, they're, they're all like trying to push the boundaries. These are all new, new, new like, well, newish, not new producers to us guys, but like yeah. to amongst the scene. Uh, and there's a lot, there's, there's loads of producers out there trying to trying to push new sounds like Sean Tyers. Even he's, I know he's been around for a while, but Sean's always, he's like, a, always promoting how we want to push future sounds, you know what I mean? And it's like, I, I think there's, there's so many fresh producers out there sometimes like losing the uh, sort of will with the, with the scene you know sometimes because you try and make something completely different and it doesn't and, and some doesn't labels resonate, or yeah. some people that they, they don't want to know they just want the 140 but, gear but you see you, you see with all these other producers like i just mentioned they're, they're all making top quality music it's going top top positions in the charts and it's like there is the the people out there pushing it and i think that just keep, as more, the more producers that come out that want to try and do stuff mm-hmm. like that the scene's just going to keep thriving and getting bigger and see, bigger if there was one thing you wanted to change about the scene at the moment what do you think that would be uh, my DJ fees. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you go. <laughs> Good answer. <laughs> but on, on the tip of what you're talking about, though, what do you think? Uh, I don't know. I think I just like to see a bit more positivity and a bit more creativity. Mm. Like keep because it's there, and it, and I, everybody's like. Uh, 
wanting something fresh. I feel like people are wanting to hear new sounds. Innovative lineups. Yeah, and I just think like that. What uh, the. The, I think they're seeing just if it just that creativity comes through a bit more, mm-hmm. it's gonna evolve. Like the, the, the techno scene right now is really pumping because they're having, they're having all that melodic techno. There's that, no boundaries there. No, that's what I mean. You've got all these different producers, some of them playing the banging techno, then you've got the ones doing the melodic techno, and it's all like thriving as one big yeah. scene. I feel like with the trans scene, if we just people keep bringing that creativity in, it's gonna blossom in the same sort of uh, capacity. Do you know what I mean? Yes, absolutely. And the thing I, I, I su- totally support that as well uh, with the current trans scene. I feel sometimes it's just that narrow-minded. They won't. They don't want anything else. Yeah, yeah. Um, which is at, at its own downfall. Which is why I've seen it being alienated to, yeah. uh, compared to other genres. You know. But that's when the trans scene first come around as well. The whole thing that kept it thriving was that uh, uh, people wanted it to be different. You know what I mean? Uh, you, listen, you listen back to like from like ninety eight up to like two thousand and four, two thousand and five, and um, a lot of the tracks that come out on labels, each track sounded completely mm-hmm. different from the last. It's like that's what I'm aiming for with my sort of label. I want I want each track to be different from the last. Like where you hear a track and you're not like it doesn't sound like oh that sounds pretty much identical to the last track, different key. Mm-hmm. I want every track to have its own identity yeah. and it's all like, so when people hear it, they're like, oh, I know what yeah, that is. Yeah, of course, you know, raw stuff. And the thing is, right, you're, you're kind of casting back to the way it was <coughs> when it was all dance music. You had Sasha, yeah. Expander. So techno guys play that. Well, dance music DJs played that. And the thing with Paul Van Dyke versus Sven Vath, they're the same sort of age. Yeah. They came around the same time. They played in the same lineups. Yeah. But Paul Van Dyke was a wee bit more energetic. Yeah, it's just up to, and, more up tempo. And a wee bit, and a wee bit up tempo and a wee bit more melodic. It wasn't called or pushed away into the corner or whatever. No, it's embraced. Everybody like it was like you know. And as you, you were saying before as well, you know, you used to go to a night and you had a progressive DJ on first. Yeah. Then a techno DJ. Then a trans guy. And then somebody else at the end, the end. Someone harder. And it was like you had a whole different spectrum of genres in one night. And I it, love ev- that. everybody enjoyed it. It wasn't like. You wouldn't have all the progressive DJ uh, fans go in at about 10 o'clock and they leave by 11 whilst all techno fans come in. and Because well, you're getting an education in different flavours. All, all dressed differently. Yeah, all right. dressed differently. <laughs> all of them in black and then all, yeah, yeah, yeah. all trans people come in cyber gear. <laughs> yeah, 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 loads of armbands. Yeah. Like, you've got to be out of, you've got to be out of two. <laughs> we, need to, we need the table back. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's the thing, though. I think, them glow sticks. I think, unfortunately, every genre is succumbing to that, though. Because even like the whole warm up stuff it is like even a lot of big techno events are just kicking off straight away with techno, whereas before it'd maybe be housey, tech yeah. housey or whatever. You know, there is still a bit of that going on in every scene and even especially in the trance scene where it's like uh, you know, you know, or oh, just go and bash it out at one three eight and it's like, But I'm the first act on, that's all right, don't worry, yeah. that they want that. Which is fair enough if that's what they want and they know what you're getting, but at the same time, it doesn't allow for any grooviness. I could never it? imagine an a million years playing first at an event and smashing it. Out so why do you do it then? I've never. <laughs> <laughs> I've never once, right? Uh, I've never, that serious, but I've never done it, right? Uh, and, I, and, I, and I just because it doesn't fit. I used to do promoting as well, and, yeah. and I know what it's like to program a lineup, and it's like you know. It spoils the run of the night. You ruin ruin it for people, man. But the thing is, as well, a lot. That's another bit of advice that I'd give to warm up DJs. Like I warmed up for good grief and that for for like three, four years before I even started getting any decent Mm -hmm. times. But but the thing is, it wasn't about not getting any decent times. It's about earning you earning your stripes and showing that you know what to do. Do you know what I mean? It's like Mm -hmm. if you turn up to a club and start bashing it out, you're spoiling the whole flow of the night. You're spoiling the the flow of the night by for, by the way it sounds. Where people come in, some people want to just go and get a drink and that. Do you know, what I mean? they want to come in, find the find where they're comfortable in the club, and then, the mixer's already you know, in amber. Yeah. Like, and then come on, they don't want to come in and it's like full throttle. It it just doesn't look right. And no. I think it, you've got to learn how to do your job pr- properly. Like, and being a good warm up DJ, it's like you can. It's it's a, it's a skilled job. Do you know what I mean? Totally. You're you're the, it's your main job to sort out the set the, the tone. Night. Yeah, mm. set the tone. When the last thing you want to do is if you're supporting Paul Van Dyke, start playing some Paul Van Dyke Play tracks for an angel. <laughs> <laughs> I know. But that, people that, do it. That'll warm up for him yeah. nicely. You know? I know. Yeah, this I'm, will start. He knows this nicely. one. He yeah. knows this <laughs> one. <laughs> when, it, when it comes on, you know this. Don't you? <laughs> That's the thing, though. People do that, you know. Well, and, like, and it is. It's probably a lack but of. But the thing is, that can get you stopped. Like people say, "Oh, I only played there once, and they never mm-hmm. booked me again." Yeah, and it's yeah. like, yeah, because you were playing hardstyle at eight o'clock in the in the at the night. You know what I mean? That's it's, it. It's like there's DJs who, like Pete Bromage, is a, is a great warm up DJ. The guy from Wrong, and he he knows he, every time I've seen him warm up, he's a perfect job, and he's known throughout the scene as mm-hmm. being a good warm up DJ. And it's like that's what he's good at doing, and he enjoys doing it. It's like, but it, to get a good name as as doing being a warm DJ, it's, it's not just, as easy. It, it's respectable though as well, yeah, totally. you know, because guys like us who know about it, 
um, who respect a good solid setting yeah. the tone sort of set. Someone who know. knows the music as well. Someone when the people come into the club, they'll be like, "Oh, this is a good. This is good, getting the night going." Do you know what I mean? Not mm-hmm. someone who's just going to be playing boring music as well. Do you know what I mean? But it's, it's really refreshing to hear you say this though, as well. You know, because you do. You find even other artists as well. I mean, I, I've personally met some through the journey we've been on um you know going to shows backstage things like that and guys are warming up that are slamming out at 136 and you're kind of saying mate you were starting up and then he was yeah. you know like I, you know i'll certainly not name names but they were kind of like well i don't really know what else to play yeah. so i just i just smashed it out and you're like i know but come on man that's, this not, is, that's not djing either i know yeah. that's not that is just being it's being selfish in a way it's like well this is my moment to shine so i'm mm. going to try and take everyone else's you but know the what thing mean? is now as well though a lot of people because they never had to dj they got gigs back because they get what they'll have a track at and it goes in the charts so they get offered a gig at a club mm-hmm. and they think the promoter wants to book them to play that that style of music but the p- promoter's giving them a chance mm-hmm. saying listen you've got tunes out i'm giving you the chance on like uh, on the to be on the on the like sort of on the billing but just because you're on the billing doesn't mean they want you to play a headline know, every slot. Si- yeah it's like the, the, uh, do you need, you're, you've been on that billing will get you a billion at other gigs but if people say oh well he was pointless because he came and he just fucking bashed it out yeah. it's pointless no no absolutely man you know it's good it's good um, quite enlightening stuff we're talking about here yes. you know because it's like I think it's down to like guys like ourselves to like educate the up and comers and you know they'll tune into this podcast fancy yourself fans of the Definitely. studio and they'll be like you know that's a great point there or whatever I'll take a wee bit more time for my, ne- for my next set or yeah. look at who's playing after me speak to the promoter go yeah, like that sometimes, right? sometimes drop a message to the DJ who's, who's on after you me say what, what, what are you thinking of starting off at BPM wise like uh, are you going to be starting off like pump pumping or you're going to be starting off pretty chilled yeah. because I'll finish at a decent BPM for you and that's a great segue to actually network with that DJ yeah, and then, then they'll because remember say they're a big DJ and they're a big pool they might say do you know what I want Liam to come and tour with me because well, he was great happens. at warming up or whatever that, that, you know whoever it may be that happens in a lot a lot of the places it's especially, who you know. in, especially over in the US like if big artists are on they'll request who they mm-hmm. want to warm up mm-hmm. and it's like they'll, they'll request certain locals if they know they've done a good job before exactly yeah. and it's reputation so it just it comes you. down to you know reputation you know, and, and, and guarding that. You it comes know. in reputation. This whole bu- industry is built on reputation. Like of course if, it is. If, if you if you if you're a nice guy and you and you're respectable and you're good at your job and you do things the right way, mm-hmm. then it, I think th- that goes a long way in this industry. And, and just couple that with being consistent. Yeah. And not getting yourself beat up, you'll do well. You know, that's yeah. it. And I think a big point, just to to kind of close up this this uh, segment, is what you were talking about earlier. Is that you know it's unfortunately or fortunately. Um, it's millimetres of progress that you're getting yeah, every day. It's small steps. But really, that's probably because most people aren't ready for that massive success quite yeah. yet. You don't want it like you wake up the next day and it's all this massive pressure. Ma- you know, it's got to be incremental to the point that you're now like, oh, I'm totally ready for the wave that comes my way. Mm-hmm. Yeah, well, it makes you appreciate it a bit more as well. Because when you look back over, you you might think, oh, things aren't really happening. You look back over 12 months, and you think, Jesus Christ, look, like, what's, look moved, what's happened. Actually. It's like I look back to when I was 15 and I had first got my pair of decks thinking, I used to stand in my bedroom with my arms up thinking, oh, imagine if I was DJing at, at Creamfields and then yeah. I, I DJed there last year and I'm yeah. doing it again this year. It's, it's amazing, like, man. But it's like, you, you, if you were to say at that time, you think that's never going to happen but and you think how long it's taken to get there, but <laughs> it's been worth it. Yeah, totally. And you've got to enjoy the journey, don't you? Yeah, the journey's all part of the, part of the experience, isn't it? It's totally. So it. let's uh, let's wrap this up. This yeah. has been class. Um, what were you about well, no, I was, I was, I was going to, I was, I was just wanting to wrap up that wee bit because I think we should move on to a lot of the musical news and stuff that you've yeah. got yeah. coming. Wrap um, up there, and then we'll do that. You've obviously got the label, uh, yeah. which is kickstarting. So when exactly is all that going to place? And what releases have you got in gigs wise? Stuff what you got coming up? Well, the, the, with the label, like uh, I did drop a little mention of it the last time I come up, but. Uh, uh, the first release is actually going to be released on the 27th of April this month. No way, man. Yeah, uh, it's going to be called Dance Congrats. With Us, which has already had support from Askew at, uh, at State of Trance, and it's uh, it's been it's been getting major, major reactions. It's my re- most requested tune from all my sets recently. Okay. That's going to be out on the 27th of this month. Uh, then after that, I've got a track from the, the, the my business partner in the label, Corin Bailey, that's coming out. It's called Inferno. That'll be there two weeks after. That is a, like a wicked old sort of like classic sounding tech trance. So it's got like that push sort of vibe, mm-hmm. but like with a really up to date, tough sort of bass line. Uh, and then after that, I don't want to start naming too many releases no, after no, that. That's, that's uh, start, uh, but we've got support from 
all major like artists are already on board with this label. We've got That's some good. big artists that you, I think you, Steve Summer do a remix for us yeah. at some point. Yeah, good We've stuff. We've got uh, some big big hitters who have said they want to be part of it. So the label's looking brilliant. It's going to be. I'm excited about it anyway because it gives me my opportunity to start. Uh, it contributing whatever I think I wanted the industry to go. Do you know Absolutely. What I mean? It's like you're taking a bit of power back there. Yeah, um, you it's know, important. And you, you know, you're running your own thing, running your own vibe, getting the artists you want to work with. Yeah. You create the music policy. You know, it's yeah. great. So that's called Mass, isn't it? Yeah, it's called, the label's called Mass and they basically there's no set, uh, there's no set sort of style. Uh, style for the label. It's just going to be about high quality, mm-hmm. good music. As long as it's well produced and all the tracks sound unique, mm-hmm. then it's gonna. That's what the label's about. I don't want. I don't want just the tracks that sound like everything else that's in the charts because that is pointless. That's mm-hmm. not what the intri- That's not what intrigues me. Mm-hmm. I want to hear a tune when I get sent it and think that sounds like nothing I've heard before, yeah. or it, it might sound like something I've heard before, but a fresh take on it. Yeah. And I, I think I just. I think that's just the direction I want to go with it. Good. And I think. From all the times I've been playing the new tunes at gigs, like great it seems reactions, like it seems, yeah, it's unreal. Well, your stuff, your stuff is really, it's, it's high class. It's, I mean, we we always we always enjoy enjoy a new Liam Wilson release, and I think the style and the direction that you're going in is the right one. Mm-hmm. So, what's the release schedule going to be like? Is that every two yeah, weeks or every be, month? We're going to be doing it every two weeks, starting off, then moving to every week. Really, we're depending on. Uh, the musical out depends but, on the quality but the things that you get if, if, there's, if I feel like there's a gap coming in the musical uh, in the release schedule I'll just knock something up <laughs> <laughs> exactly that's a, that's, a, that's the good thing though because yeah. you're making music I've got that much music stored up in my back catalogue anyway of unreleased tracks things that I want to finish things that could be possible collabs anything mm-hmm. so Great. It, it, I'm, 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 cu- I'm fully uh fully um, like ready to go with all this and it's like it's my passion you know what I mean I don't want to do anything else Brilliant. so I'm ready to hit the ground running with it it's the right moment I think for you yeah. as well to be doing it so Aye. release wise um, <coughs> you've had some stuff signed recently do you want to tell us well, about some of the stuff there well, I've, at the minute I've got that's out in the charts I've got my remix of uh, the big it's like a big uh, tech trans classic the cocaine remix that I've done for Grotesque that's still in the charts now I've got an original track of my own called um the, the bigger picture that's on critical uprising that's still in the charts then i think at the end of this month obviously i'll have my own release out dance with us i've got a collab with dan dobson coming on future sound of egypt the first week of may um busy uh, man i've got another collab on future sound of egypt with the technicians guys which is another big tech transfer got a re- an original release coming out on the future sound of egypt main label and then some other uh, releases I can't quite mention yet. But Good stuff. Uh, Brilliant, man. Full, full summer, full of releases. Try and keep everybody up to date with some new Liam Wilson stuff That's all the time. Great, you know. And finally, gigs. What have you got coming? Uh, gigs, I've got end of this month, I'm going to Australia. Nice. I've uh, got Melbourne and Sydney on the 4th and 5th of May, I think it is. Uh, then after that, I've got some gigs in, uh, like uh, some hopeful summer beef dates to announce. Then I've got Creamfields, uh, America... Uh, some wrongs the future sound of egypt tour there's a uh, quite a busy summer full of uh, gigs and stuff as Brilliant, well man that's top class you mate. deserve it mate for yeah, sure you know, much. that's good one of the guys in the scene that's actually grafted and put the time in put the effort and learned it took no shortcuts Nosy so stuff. it's a guy to learn from so you know find out more about liam wilson check his facebook page we'll put all the links you know, to your stuff we'll in stick the, the links well. in. all the links down here yes yeah. yeah. we'll just point <laughs> they just appear <laughs> but um, i also yeah. just want to say like uh, watching the two of you guys because i said that like obviously you're you're, you're certainly a, a studio tactician um and uh, the same as yourself and it's been an absolute joy like watching the two of you bounce off each other actually so much so i've really just tried to keep myself out of the studio yeah. to allow the flow and just allow you to go you have got two tracks on the brew that are sounding absolutely sweet. Oh, yeah, it's been, uh, it's been a I'd great I'd like to see some more on. collabs in the future as yeah, well. Definitely. definitely. We'll absolutely. definitely be doing, do, me and Stephen will definitely be doing more words together. Yeah, like, I'll come down to yours. Yeah. Uh, your bit at some point. Your bit. Your, your bit. bit. Come out of my bit. It's <laughs> Liam coming out tonight. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. That's a Scottish thing, isn't it? It is. Uh, my bit. <laughs> what you guys say? I'll my head bit. down to your bit. Well, that? you said you'd landed. So we went yeah. to the airport we to pick him up, right? They landed. They went to the airport instead of What is landed? Landed and insinuates. That would insinuate that you're touching touching down. Touching down. But I don't know. Maybe well, it's what does a train do then? I've just docked. Is that shit? <laughs> <laughs> That's a shit. That's a shit. <laughs> Get you done at the, the, t- the terminal. Yeah. And what was it Craig Conley done? Is he said he says I'll be there at tea time. So I'm like, right, okay, 6 p.m. And he was actually meeting lunchtime. <laughs> 
I don't know. I don't know. I think uh, everybody has their own different uh, they do. take on it. I think us in the UK, I think we're all just pretty fucked. See, we're, we're, we're all, we're all time, right? <laughs> The junior was saying that there, but for the UK and so how many different regions there is, the accent yeah. differences for such oh, a small place. You can go from a different town, the next town onwards, and they'll speak differently. Well, it's the same here. You go to Helensburg and then the bar. Sound like Liam. <laughs> <laughs> Glad that. But hey, Liam, look, it's been an absolute pleasure. pleasure. man. This no, has been, been the Escapade Show. A uh, very special guest, Mr. Liam Wilson. No, great be to be sure, on. Be sure to check out his uh, all his social media, follow him online, and maybe you'll see him at a gig somewhere, where, wherever you're listening as well. Hopefully you see both these boys yeah. in a gig somewhere yeah, soon man. as well. Yeah, Same definitely. lineup, that'd be great. Keep your eyes and ears out for the track of ours. Yeah. We'll um, put the finishing touches to that. Um, and put more some info, come on that soon. And yeah. 27th of April, Mass, Mass launches yes. its first brand new track. Yeah, dance with us. Top class. So yes, that has been Escapade Show... 14. Uh, 14. Woo! With, uh, Racing through them. Getting now. old. <laughs> <laughs> I know, I know. I've been a uh, woo. That's Gal, yes. Liam Wilson. <laughs> and uh, yeah, let's, let's wrap up Troops. Thank you. See you all soon. Thank yeah. you. Bye.